Ahmed Tavesh Patel, editor at Trade Finance Global and host of Trade Finance Talks. Here we are today at the BAFT Virtual International Convention 2020, and I'm joined by Jean Francois Dennis, Global Head of Trade at BNP Paribas. Today, we'll be discussing how the bank has changed since the onset of the COVID 19 pandemic how it's adapting to the changing landscape for trade finance and what the really challenging events of 2020 really mean for the future of trade finance at the bank. Jean-Francois, thank you very much for joining us on Trade Finance Talks TV. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all. So to start off with, could you give us your 30 second elevator pitch? Who are you, where are you from and what do you do? Okay, sure. Um... I'm Belgian. Uh, I'm uh, a Global Head of Trade Solution and Network Management at BNP Paribas. Uh, concretely, this means uh, Global Trade Solution. It's about uh, trade, traditional trade. So that's what I'm, I'm looking for. Uh, and Network Management is basically uh, the relationship with third party banks. So be it not only for trade, it is a, a centralized team for basically the, the management of the bank network we are using. Uh, for any any uh, business in the bank, which is trade, cash management, obviously payments and so on. So these are my two roles uh, in the bank. And uh, um, I I was before that uh, uh, for eight years deputy head of cash management. So I'm on trade today, but I have quite a, some background on payments and cash management. And I will not do the whole history uh, or past history, but uh, that's uh, that's uh, my my main background, let's say. Thanks very much, Jean-Francois. So global trade is really is on a bit of a knife edge. We've seen COVID-19, the US elections, Brexit and various other trade tensions. What does this mean for the trade finance industry? And, and in your current role at BNP Paribas, what keeps you up at night? Yeah, well, you know, trade finance is about uh, helping um, the real economy and supporting our, 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 our clients on the real economy. So obviously also helping when there are tensions. Um, I would even say our, our role is even more important, if I may say, or we feel uh, much more useful even and relevant when, when there are tensions, uh, because the, the trade finance solution by definition helped mitigate those, uh, those, uh, those tensions, right? Uh, be it uh, in terms of financing, be it in terms of counterparty risks and so on. So, uh, but also it's, it's very important in, in such, let's say, well, difficult times to help understand and, and share with our clients, share amongst banks, by the way, on the latest situation in, in very much detail. It's an expertise uh, uh, business um, and, and sharing that expertise, uh, sharing the latest uh, information, the latest status on how things are going. And it goes up to very, very deep details from time to time, and especially like in the COVID crisis when things are sometimes changing from one week to another. So this is, uh, this is very crucial. Um, Basically, that's that's also what when I say it's we are important and relevant. I think when when in these type of times, um, uh, it's also what we see um, in the in the results. I think that uh, that we may see today a lot of trade financing. So this is obviously picking up in the search for liquidity. Um, of course, on the other end, you have the documentary business, which is uh, which is uh, decreasing. We, we end of July we were. I think uh, these are the swift uh, information, so not uh, not BNP Paribas only, but the market. Uh, we were decreasing by 11%, 10%, 11% uh, in terms of numbers and even 20, 25% in terms of value, uh, just like the international payments, by the way, yes, because it's a much more direct reflection of the uh, mirroring, basically, uh, the, 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 the reality of the business. So, yes, we are basically... Uh, uh, in these times, um, uh, helping uh, we are uh, basically like mi mirroring what's, what the economy. Uh, I think um, coming back to your question on the, uh, what keeps would keep me awake at night. Uh, I'm not sure I'm, I'm, I'm awake. I, I sleep well, <laughs> I would say, but still I would have one two or two concern. I think on the very short term, um, the main concern uh, as banks as a whole and, and BNP Paribas, of course, is we, we are open and wide open for business. And of course, we need to stay very wide open for business, uh, again, for, for, for helping the economy. That's really the time to help. And um, uh, of course, uh, health uh, and just having everyone and teams and so on in good health, I think is really a priority by definition in these times. 
I would say a second one is uh, I think we need to uh, uh, hope uh, that, uh, and again, I'm talking for the, in the market in general, that uh, the IT is doing well because uh, we are very much dependent and even more than ever, even our conversation here uh, by video, uh, if it breaks out, uh, uh, we, it, it is impacting our, our relation there. <laughs> so uh, I, I think that's a, that's very short term concern that we could have. Um, on the mid and long term concern, um, of course, uh, well, this is a very complicated situation and uh, we can think about the cost of risk for banks, obviously. So yes, definitely um, we are helping um, uh, on many fronts. Uh, this has a cost and will have a cost and that's of course a concern at some stage. So we need to be um, well balanced and to, to, to keep uh, eyes wide open as well, uh, make the right choices and so on. So that's, I think, what would be my concerns on, on short and, and medium term. Thank you very much. So, so I guess moving on from that, your, your bank's tagline is a bank for a changing world and for sure 2020 certainly has been changing. Where exactly does BNP Paribas sit within the trade finance market and, and is this likely to change? Well, it, it's, uh, it, the, the tagline is indeed uh, the bank for a changing world and again, um, yeah, uh, it's every day we, we, we try to prove that, right, to, to help the businesses and help our, our clients. Um, I think, uh, well, basically cash management and trade finance have been brought under the same umbrella. and. Um, there are several reasons for that, but one of the reasons is um, the fact that we support the real economy. Okay, these are businesses where you, you, you support the real economy and you need to have um, a, a long-term commitment on that. And this is what, in our group, the bank is doing, what the top management of the bank is doing as well, is, is a very important and, and, and long-term view on, on those businesses. Um, and, and that's important because it is, as I said, an expertise, a people and a technology business. And it's the same for cash management and the same for trade finance, in fact, right? Uh, so you can't go in and out every six months. You, 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 you have to build that expertise. You have to invest for this technology. You have to build the people, the teams. And uh, this you do only if you have a, a long-term view. And this is what uh, I think we, we have and the group has. Um, and, and is even extending, even in these hard times, even uh, we, 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 we had like many, uh, you know, strategic plans and so on. And, and we reconfirm this also, okay? So it's important for, uh, again, because it is a very core business. So, okay, it goes ups and downs. We, we are uh, in a crisis. Um, again, we need to have wide, the eyes wide open and, and, and take good decision and so on and so forth, not doing anything. But um, on the other hand, um, it's not because it's a bit difficult for the moment that uh, it should kind of be a stop and go uh, uh, thing. It, we have to go through that uh, uh, very clearly. And so uh, to come back to your, to your question of where, where we are uh, on, in terms of trade finance, where the bank positions itself, um, well, we, we, we are there. We, we want to, uh, to, to, to help, as I said, and this is all in a, in a long-term view. Okay. And we continue on our plans, we continue to invest, we continue to invest in people, in technology, and so on and so forth, even through the crisis, in fact. Okay. Um, and that's, I think, uh, uh, a very key, uh, very key for us. So just going into a bit more detail about this, what types of businesses does BNP help in, in, in which markets and, and what kind of trade finance support does the bank offer? We, we, we are helping by definition all the clients that we consider are clients of us, so we are not active on all markets, on all typologies, but uh, uh, BNP Paribas is uh, basically a very diversified model where we have a CIB, uh, which is a corporate investment bank with large corporates. So obviously we serve those clients. We also have domestic, what we call domestic markets and international retail business, which are basically a number of countries. Of course, we know France, but there is Belgium, there is Luxembourg, there is also Poland, there is Turkey, where we have, uh, and Italy, sorry, I forget. Uh, uh, where we have uh, retail banks, uh, and in these countries, we are supporting Morocco as well. We are supporting uh, SMEs up to very large corporates and even very small enterprises. So all these clients, by definition, as they are clients, we do support them through our solutions and through our uh, tra traditional trade solutions, for instance, be it bank guarantees, be it uh, uh, documentary business, be it trade financing and so on. So definitely uh, all the clients we serve in these uh, geographies and, uh, and these regions. 
So let's go into a bit more detail about COVID-19 and, and, and the last eight to nine months have, have really impacted the lives and livelihoods of, of people and businesses all around the world. How has the bank been dealing with this? Well, um, I'll try to avoid to tell uh, what has been already told a lot, I think, in the, in the context. But yeah, as, as, uh, as uh, I, I think many, uh, we went through the first phase of a bit uh, surprise, if I may say, and getting uh, ready to stay wide open for business uh, with, uh, in fact, uh, a very high flexibility. And I say for BNP Paribas, but the same for clients and I think in general in the market. Uh, the uh, flexibility that we would not think even it would be possible, if I may say. Um, we had, of course, a period where uh, it has been uh, difficult, uh, I would say, operationally sometimes for our clients or for ourselves as well, for, I think, the whole market uh, because of, uh, let's, say, uh, let's say, physical supply chains, uh, uh, document transportation, all these things that were uh, sometimes uh, disrupted or, or, or blocked and so on. But at the end of the day, um, also there, uh, I think we all found uh, quite, uh, quite some flexibility, uh, be it in uh, ad ac uh, adopting, uh, let's say, uh, front-end or front-end tools, uh, making possible to, to uh, register and to onboard uh, digitally, uh, for instance, just as an example. Um, and so a, a lot of flexibility in all this. Now, um, I think just to illustrate a bit um, and to refer a bit to the very much need of communication all along the road, every day, every week, and basically demonstrating the expertise and the need to work with people that basically know what's happening. Um, I'll take the example of India when the lockdown was um, uh, uh, like uh, in, in, in kind of a, of a weekend, uh, over a weekend that happened. Um, first, of course, uh, you need to understand what happens, but along the road, when it's recovered, uh, there has been big disruption on document, uh, you know, the, 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 the express courier the type of, uh, of, uh, of services uh, where it was locked, and then it started to reopen. But in fact, it reopened, uh, you know, by postcode, by postcode, even in Mumbai, it was not the whole Mumbai, it was a postcode by postcode and so on. To get that type of detailed information, you need to have people on the ground, of course, that knows that. You need to, to nearly, uh, literally tell the world about it. Uh, and again, it was changing from one day to another or one week to another and so on. And it's a very detailed example, but I think uh, this is a very perfect uh, proof of the, 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 the strengths of a network, the strengths of an internal network for us, uh, uh, as we are active in, in, in more than 55 countries, uh, and when I mean active, I mean on the ground and with that type of information and so on. The network with our own clients and exchange of information, but also the network across the banking industry to, uh, of course, there has been a lot of, of, um, of meetings and workshops, uh, be it ICC driven or others, to exchange on, on, on things and so on. So again, uh, that's, I, I think that was the, the key, uh, this, let's say, communication network and so on during the pandemic. Uh, and still needed, unfortunately, because Things are changing still uh, as we speak, of course. So let's talk about the regulatory side of things, because I think it's really important that we bring this into the uh, into the equation here. And it's often debated, particularly with a focus on, on, on SMEs and MSMEs, who have undoubtedly probably been the biggest losers out of the, the pandemic. The Basel framework doesn't really look like it's heading in, in the direction of loosening controls over things like LDG ratios, which doesn't really bode well for MSMEs. Has the bank also had to pull or reduce credit lines to new and existing clients when it comes to accessing various trade finance products as, as a result of this Basel regulation? And, and what's the pandemic, uh, what are the impacts the pandemic have had uh, on, on lending as a bank? Uh, what, what we need is, is, is a very important topic and it's very important to bring it back to the table now, the Basel topic, right? Um, what happened, what's happening in Europe, because I will talk a little bit about the implementation of the Basel uh, Committee uh, rules, let's say, to the, in the European context. In fact, we were uh, waiting for the draft, let's say, of uh, the European authorities, of uh, the trans translation of this Basel Committee to, let's say, uh, the, the European directive, uh, mid of this year. So they were supposed originally to, 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 to issue a first draft in, 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 uh, in June about, okay? Before that, there was a public consultation earlier, uh, in up to January uh, 2020. 
Now, they post that. And of course, because the European authorities at that point in time, very understandable, had other priorities to solve with the COVID. So it has been post, uh, not meaning uh, stopped, but post, and this will come back. Okay, so the, 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 I don't know when exactly, whether it's in a question of weeks or months, but this will be implemented and the work at the European authorities side will, will, will restart, I would say there. It is very important because indeed that we uh, go back and speak about it uh, from the various fronts as banks, uh, as uh, uh, ICC, BAFT and so on, that we speak again about it and that we underline the need for the post-COVID uh, situation of, um, let's say, not exaggerating, if I may say, in this transposition, because a number of rules will definitely, if they are applied as they were in the, defined in the, by the visa committee, it is, hit, it is hitting uh, the industry and trade finance uh, massively, right, possibly. Now, we have good hopes that we can convince, that we can uh, explain why some of the proposals are maybe exaggerated a bit and so on. But it's now that we have to talk about it again. And we have taken some initiative on our side uh, as a bank, but also we saw the French bank, for instance. We are currently speaking with some of the European banks to really make our voice well uh, again understood and, uh, and heard in the coming, uh, in the coming uh, weeks and months. That's the right moment to do it. I think, I hope, uh, I hope at least that indeed um, the context will be a little bit taken into account as well, because definitely, of course, our business is very key to sustain uh, and, and, and support uh, the economy and, and the recovery as well uh, of this economy. So this is, this is a very key point. We've talked a lot about it. There may be a bit of fatigue sometimes, we may think, but it's the right time to talk about it again and to, to, to point out uh, the, the topics uh, that are um, too exaggerated, if I may say so, uh, towards the authorities in the coming weeks and months. No, no, absolutely. I com completely agree. And, and, and often we hear people being fairly blasé about the role of alternative funders within, within the trade finance market. But ultimately, you know, the banks have massive balance sheets and, and, and capabilities. Um, we, we know the impacts now of, of, of the Basel rules following the 2008 financial crisis. And we could probably pinpoint those exact rules and why, they're, why, why they could be detrimental to MSF, yeah. MSME access absolutely. to finance. Absolutely, absolutely. Great. And I'll add another lens to this back to what, what we were discussing at the start of, of this recording. The private trade credit insurance market really does play a, a vital role in trade finance, often a bit of an unsung hero until the market changes, of course. Given banks work closely with trade credit insurance, has this worsened the problem we were just talking about even, even more? Uh, it's 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 uh, insurers is uh, uh, are very important, of course, because we need to distribute and share the risks. I mean, by definition, I would even say, right? Uh, I'm not sure it is more or more or less true uh, with Basel or without. Of course, of course, if there are a lot of constraint, even more constraint, we would be uh, more obliged to distribute that risk, I guess, and so on. But I think. Um, um, it, yeah, it, I think we need all the forces at these stages, if I may say. So all the capabilities also to uh, share and support uh, uh, the risks. Um, so um, um, I, I hope, yeah, that we, we can, uh, in a way, of course, we are competitors, uh, uh, but we also collaborate, uh, obviously. And I, I think in this time, especially, we need all the forces, if I may say. Okay, there is uh, enough to do. <laughs> in this case, enough risk to share, if I may say, uh, ultimately. So we, 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 need, we need to continue to collaborate on that um, and find the right balances. Absolutely. So talking of change, let's talk about digitalization. And I think we can definitely approach these from two different areas. Firstly, the incremental innovation, probably the stuff that we've seen as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. And, and then secondly, disruptive blue, blue sky innovation. What's the problem statement here? And how is the bank looking at moving trade finance into the new digital arena? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that, uh, uh, and we didn't prepare that one, that you speak about incremental and, uh, uh, and disruptive, because this is, this is really exactly the way we see it. Um, the, 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 um, Trade finance is complex, right? It's a, it's a complex beast, if I may say. A lot of uh, different products, by the way. We, we need to discuss this point basically uh, by 
separating a bit the, the, the typology of products also. Um, and um, we need to try on the two roads, if I may say. So the incremental one and the descriptive one. And first, I would like just to split a bit the products because let's take, let's take bank guarantees. I mean, we are in fact innovating since years, digitalizing the, the bank guarantees. But of course, it's not that fancy sometimes we did because it's a, it's a, it may be bilateral, if I may say, but it may be proprietary. I mean, we have e-banking tools that allows for uh, asking for issuance of guarantee that remits the guarantee electronically and so on in a bilateral way with our clients and this, their beneficiary, for instance. We see since a while uh, local, it's not international, it's rather local solutions uh, to create some kind of um, uh, platform which are uh, local in the market. If I take in France, there is one uh, for, which is specialized around the construction sector with, where basically the banks, of course, with the applicants and beneficiary can uh, log in that platform, issue their guarantee and all this. Uh, and this type of platform locally, there are other examples that are or existing or basically rather uh, starting. This is rather incremental, all this, right? I mean, this is not kind of uh, um, uh, that complicated, if I may say, but also primarily, I think, because the number of stakeholders uh, to align is much more limited, okay? So that's the trade finance. This is a bank guarantee. This is, uh, this is very much feasible and it's, it's, it's on its way already. And there are many other initiatives on that front, by the way. On the other end, and often we talk a lot about documentary and paper and so on huh, when we talk about this uh, transformation. And this is, of course, the big chunk, uh, big difficult chunk, and kind of the holy grail of getting all this digitalized and so on. And that's very difficult uh, to do, of course, uh, uh, because of everything we all know uh, in terms of number of stakeholders, uh, number of parties. It's an international story because it's uh, not local and so on and so forth. But there again, um, we have the two roads. Yes, the incremental one, uh, and it can come even from non-technological initiatives. Like, let's just review some time. The number of documents and the types of documents that are exchanged with often a lot which are not needed even, okay? So we can simplify there. It's, it's, it's not very sexy, if I may say, but it's also a kind of innovation, right? Or at least, uh, um, facilitating the process. Uh, of course, we can exchange electronic files when we can. Uh, the different parties have to agree on that. There, the COVID has proven also with some countries helping temporarily at least sometimes in, in getting electronic uh, documents accepted and these type of things. Uh, there is a number of uh, uh, initiatives also on the market with the SWIFT file act, file act to exchange, which is just the media at the end. So the key there is to say, okay, can we work with digitalized uh, copies, if I may say, of the documents, and can we put things in place? And yes, it can. Uh, of course, it's difficult when you need a bill of lading because there is a, 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 ship, a, a ship involved and so on, but, uh, but it can on some areas. So let's do that. It's incremental, let's do that. And we are engaged in a number of uh, such initiatives. And then indeed, you have the disruptive ones. And uh, we are in, uh, if I stay on the documentary business, we are engaged in Contour, for instance, uh, and clearly, I think um, uh, if we want to one day change that at the, at the source, if I may say, uh, and, and, and much more uh, drastically, then yes, we need to, to try push that type of initiative. It's not easy. Uh, by definition, it's not easy. It would be, have been done since long if it would, right? So it's not easy. Uh, we need a number of uh, strong believers. We need to have a number of, uh, also on the corporate side, not only banks, by the way, uh, and to, to start move that forward. And uh, we need to, to play on, this, uh, on these two fields, incremental and, and disruptive, uh, for sure. So now I'm going to ask you an even more challenging question. We noticed that BMP Paribas is, is part of a number of different digitalization initiatives from Marco Polo to Trado to E-Trade Connect and Trade Information Network. And, and I'm going to make a shameless plug at the, um, the WCO TFG white paper that we launched last week, which is available uh, in the download section uh, here, where, where we actually mapped out several of these different uh, different initiatives. Why, why are there so many different initiatives that, that BNP Paribas has invested into? Is the bank perhaps hedging its bets here? 
No, I think it's uh, it's just an illustration of how diverse the trade finance is, because you will have noted that uh, these initiatives that you name, they are not tackling the same type of issue or the same type of product. So some are, uh, and even I, if, I, if I go beyond uh, the, the, the initiative uh, we are involved in, some are more open account oriented, some are more documentary business oriented, some are tackling uh, SMEs uh, on payment commitment type of initiatives, uh, some others large corporates rather, uh, some are really a kind of a worldwide playing field or trying to have a worldwide playing field, some others are starting from a more regional perspective or local perspective. So this really illustrates the, 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 the complexity of, the, of, the, of when we say trade finance, of what it means. It's, it's about all of this. So I'm not surprised, that we should not be surprised, I think that there, would, there is not one initiative to cover all this. It's a big beast and we need to cut it in pieces. It's a big problem. You cut the problem in pieces in a way, right? Now, um, it's true that it's, it's, it is a lot. Uh, and by the way, they all started a bit same period, right? It's all kind of three years time, two years time, that type of when it started. Um, and uh, and we all know that, uh, yeah, like always, in that, and we should know that, we should not be surprised that, you, you know, these curves, uh, Gartner-like, yeah, where there's a lot of initiatives and then, okay, a, a, a number of them are, are successful and a number of them are not, not big successful. But that's, again, normal huh? you, you, in a way. So we should not be surprised that uh, it should be like that. But I think the, 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 the fact that there are a lot of initiatives is in, the, in our case very much linked to the, the diversity of what trade finance is. And it's, it's no surprise, I would say, right? Very good answer. So looking forward to the future and, and perhaps as we move past the, the immediate pandemic response, which has been the absolute uh, priority for the banks, sustainability also remains a key focus for governments, for consumers and financiers. And, Given that BNP Paribas is one of the leading for sustainability across the board, what does this mean for sustainable trade finance and how does your trade function approach sustainable trade? So first, it's, it's, um, it's, it's uh, a fact that in BNP Paribas uh, and in the, the plan of the group, sustainability has, uh, is one of the main, uh, the main pillars. So that's uh, demonstrated in many cases, I think. Um, and I think the first thing is um, we will know, all need to understand that, that um, or be convinced that um, banks are change agents in that. It is a problem, I would say, which is much broader even and much more complex than the documentary ones we were discussing, right? Uh, it is a small problem compared to uh, the future of our planet and so on, right? So, um, and banks can be change agent. Of course, we can be change agent because we are supporting the economy and because we can, um, and again, we can play a role in, in trying to, to basically bring a number of, uh, of direction and, and, and help a number of direction taking life and, do, and, and be, being developed. Um, so that's, that's point one. And again, this is not for BNP Paribas alone. I think banks in general, every world took me there, right? And, uh, but uh, we, the, in the group, uh, we are very much convinced of that. Now, to come to the initiative, the concrete initiatives, uh, of course, it started very much with um, what we've seen like um, uh, green bonds, green loans, and so on. Um, and we have a number of uh, real cases as well on, uh, on specific contract finance, uh, be it on bank guarantees, be it on the LC, which is uh, with a sustainable aspect, and so on. Um, the, the, where we are with that is, um, so we have a number of cases, real life cases, uh, where Basically, there is a project at some point in time with a sustainable, uh, let's say, uh, uh, aspect in it, right? And uh, with, uh, where the solution is structured in such a way that indeed um, uh, there is benefit in a way uh, to go in the right direction in terms of sustainability. And in case it doesn't go in the right direction, basically, even there, if there is penalty and things like that to pay, basically, it goes those penalty to some projects, for instance, that are beneficial and so on, uh, in terms of sustainability. Um, and so we have concrete cases where we have uh, trade finance products attached to, uh, to, uh, to this type of, uh, of, uh, of project. Uh, uh, one which is public is the Siemens Gamesa uh, uh, one, uh, where, which is very interesting, uh, and a very interesting one with uh, uh, wind farm projects uh, with KPI uh, attached and so on. And in case of uh, 
bonus or malus if I may say uh, in case of completion which goes to uh, uh, Spanish uh, healthcare uh, for instance uh, research in fact. Um, so uh, I think where we are is we we are at the stage where we try now uh, to go to scale okay so there is a lot of uh, first training that has that happened uh, in general to uh, uh, on the topic um, uh, it starts with awareness and then it goes to basically how can you concretely act right uh, and this goes together with some central teams they exist at the level of the bank the group uh, they exist uh, or corporate uh, banking and they exist also at the level of trade finance where people are there to help structure solutions um, because they know about you know the right method to um, first to categorize uh, uh, an incentive uh, in sustainable criteria or uh, define the right uh, KPIs uh, and so on and so forth. So you need to have a group of people to do that because it's impossible to have everyone uh, being able to do. And so that basically through the training, through the awareness, the training, some, let's say, central methods in a way and uh, some small central teams, not big teams, but small central teams that can help putting it in practice, you get, you, you scale with that. So that's where we are. Uh, and, and I think it's a very, uh, very, very important journey. In fact, yeah, very important. Thanks very much, Jean-Francois. And I think from a sustainable trade finance perspective, we can definitely look at what's been happening and the progress within the green bond space and, and perhaps the, uh, the green finance space when we then look at sustainable trade finance. And, and obviously, as you mentioned, the key really is in the detail here in terms of how we actually, how we actually make that work. How do we standardize certification in, in different regions? How do we ensure reporting is, is, is the same across different markets, etc.? Very, very important topic there. Jean-Francois, thank you very much for joining us on Trade Finance Talks TV and also at the BAFT International Convention 2020. Look forward to hearing from you for the rest of this week. Thank you very much. See you soon. Thank you.